Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I am kicking off my work on a project that is being hosted by Annie Claxton called Colour Inspiration. So I'll include a link to Annie's channel and to Annie's video kicking off this project so you can get involved too. Anyone is invited to participate and I think it's going to be so much fun. So Annie is going to be creating a mixed media sketchbook. I'm planning to take this project and work on it as a fabric and stitch and textile art and fibre um, sketchbook project. And so Annie's going to be giving us uh, prompts that we can then interpret in our own way. She'll be sharing her interpretation and others who are taking part can also share theirs. And so I've been really wanting this year to focus a bit more in on some things that I haven't done as much on. And so colour theory and just getting a bit freer and using different colours, looking at different combinations. And so part of that focus was um, that I wanted to also expand my repertoire of tools. So I was so thrilled for Christmas to receive a set of 72 Derwent Inktense blocks. Um, and these can be used like a um, crayon. Um, but you can also use them as essentially a palette from which to pick up um, the ink and to bring it onto the work. Now Inktense, if you haven't come across it, is water activated. Um, and once it's been activated with water and then dried, it is then permanent. Um, you can wash it and also you can apply water to it again and it won't reactivate and it won't smudge. And you can then add other layers over the top of it. So it's a great little... Um, product and I've been just starting to play with it. I drew myself a little design. Um, I've added 2024 there just in my friction marker um, and then I've used different techniques with the ink tents, um, sometimes working um, wet paint onto a wet surface here where you've got that beautiful almost sort of tie-dye effect. Other times creating lines and then shading out from that which is a sort of a softer shaded effect. Sometimes using it quite intensely other times getting little speckles in the leaf by having water and putting little droplets on, using the white from the palette over the top of other colours. So lots and lots of um, different ways you can use it blending to get this beautiful colour of the bird's, bird's head. So I've started stitching into that with some, some beautiful Sue Spargo threads and that will just be something I work on but I thought it'd be a great place to record the different prompts um, from Annie at the moment. I've just quickly written them down just with my friction marker but um, I think over time I'll just add to it or maybe put a panel down the side. What I've also done that might be a nice idea if you do have either a paint set or some ink tents um, is I've done my own little colour swatch of each of the rows of the ink tents just using a regular piece of material that I got from the reverse art truck. I like this design because it had little circles on it and I coloured each of the circles in with a different colour going in the order that they are and so this allows me to really easily and quickly see what colour it is and I've done it as a little hanging bookmark so it can sit next to my craft desk and I can refer to it whenever I'm wanting to work out what colour would I like to do something in and once I find which one I want I just count along the, the row to find it. And so I just did this onto the fabric and then folded the fabric around a piece of um, felt and folded the edges under and then just stitched along each of the edges and stitched a piece of baking twine. So that's just a little idea if you haven't haven't done one of those and you have a range of colours that you want to know what they look like. Now something interesting I have seen in quite a few videos on Inktense is people say you can really only do it onto fabric with sizing or fabric that's been treated. Um, they say Calico with sizing in it that's brand new. Um, this is secondhand Calico that has been washed so it's definitely not got its sizing in it but it was fantastic to um, paint on too. Likewise with this, this is, I don't even know, it came from the, the reverse art truck. Um, but it, yeah, it, the colours didn't spread out, the colours didn't misbehave. The only place I got a little bit of extra shading here was where I was actually playing with the technique and putting some extra water outside of the lines to see what it would actually do. So I'll keep this one next to my craft desk. Just tuck it in over here. Um, I'll move this one out of the way and so our first prompt is to pick one colour family 
and to create a mini sketchbook. So I'm planning to create a fabric sketchbook and I've picked green as my colour family. So Annie's also doing green and she'll be doing that in her mixed media but I thought yep I will do green and I will do it um, in a fabric sketchbook. Now I'm just going, I might get these out of the way just so I don't splash water onto them. not to kick things so I'm going to put down just a bit of paper towel over my little plastic board that's protecting my work area I've torn myself some Calico um, which I'll be using as the book pages I wanted essentially one page for each of the colors of the green so I'll just slide them up. I want to sort of, I think I'll go from that green one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think that's still green. Fourteen, maybe fourteen. So we've, I think we've got fourteen here, but um, or at least more than fourteen. I'll just start with one to start off and we'll go from there. So I quite like the effect you get when you start to get um, the intense wet and just let it blossom on the surface. So let's, um, I'll just do this actually. I like to sit these up just to make it a bit easier to um, get them out of their pan. So what you can do is just pick them up as I mentioned like a crayon. I'll just show you a few different so this is going to be interesting because I'm actually getting a rubbing effect from the um, the paper towel underneath and so part of doing this mark making is one to use the colors that will be part of the color family to give myself an interesting background for my little fabric book um, but also I think once you start to color things up you become less precious about it and it becomes more playful. Now I'm using a sprayer. It doesn't have anything um, in it apart from water, um, but I quite like using this as a way to just get um, yeah, a nice amount of water on and to then be able to distribute it around and start to see the effects that you can create. But I thought I'll stick to one colour on each of the pages because I'll come back to it um, a bit later on. I'm thinking I'll do each page with trying to keep the fabrics and the threads within that colour scheme. But I'll do different mark making on each page, I think. So let's see now that it's wet, if I start to then add some further. You can see it um, takes even more pigment off the, the ink tents. And I wonder if I now just give this a little spritz because you do want to activate your ink tent. You don't want to leave it unactivated, otherwise it can then reactivate in the future. I like that I've got a little bit of that graininess, but I do want to just make sure they are all, all activated. It's a lovely shaded sort of effect. I don't count myself to be a like a painting artist, um, but I do enjoy having a paintbrush with me. There we go. And so let's have a look at the back as well, because I was wondering, do I need to? Because I'm thinking in my little fabric book I'll have pages and then I'll probably stitch them together and have them opening so each one will be its own little double page spread and then I'll stitch another one on and keep going that way so the back of them probably doesn't need to be colored covered up so I think that one's um, fine I've got myself a little pile in fact I'll put another bit of paper towel on the top just off camera to the right here or the left here sorry and I'll just um, stack them up and I don't even mind if they get a bit of color transference between them in fact it'll be interesting when I put this one on and so this time I wonder 
will I? Yeah, I think I'll spray it first. Give it a little bit of a spray to start it off. And then I'll pick up this. I was thinking it might be nice to do a sort of a spiral. I love spirals. Let's do another one coming out. Maybe I'll do some little ones as well. Give it a little bit of activation. Isn't that lovely? A bit of that pigment around. Might even put a bit more, a bit more spray on. More the merrier. It's been such a humid day in Melbourne. I'm probably not helping the humidity in the room with um, spritzing around all this water, but that's okay. Now, what I might do is just pick up a little bit of colour as well off here, and just put a few more little, a bit more colour around. more spraying. There's plenty of pigment there to just gradually sort of blossom blossom out. And so as long as it stays wet you can keep moving the um, the ink around. So I like that one. Oh look at that we're getting a beautiful one. I'll have to find something to do with the paper towel. I don't know if it'll be too fragile at the end but we shall see now next one what will we do what do we want to do i think i'll spray it i do find that that gives me a nice nice way to start with getting that spread it's interesting this um this one looks almost the same color as the one next to it but i don't think it is almost like mountains or something now what was I, I was thinking with this I might even sort of screw it up having so much fun I am I hope you're having fun watching as well it's giving me some ideas because I know quite a few of us in our little stitchy community are probably newer to ink tents and so hopefully my little adventures will also give you some ideas of things you can try whether you're taking part in this project or just wanting to make interesting backgrounds for your pieces so I don't want to soften this too much I just want to shade out a little bit of the I can't see even got out to the very edges to the, um, the fringy, fringy bits. There we go. Take that one up. Next up. Where are we up to now? We're up to here. Maybe I'll do some hearts. I'm doing dry inking, although it's kind of picking up, I think, the moisture from below. when you're mark making there's no right or wrong now I have heard that they will melt a little bit in your um, fingers but not not too much at all and if you're worried about that you can get um, the intense in a pencil format as well but I have heard 
um, that that can give you more sort of lines still showing on your work when you've um, done it rather than with this you can get a sort of a softer softer effect oh, I like that and I'm not worrying about sort of cleaning my brush in between I don't mind if I get a little bit of color, color transference from the previous previous one I don't think I want to do too much else with that. I just want to leave that as is. Almost reminds me of sort of graffiti, graffiti art. Okay, next up, what do we want to do? I'm going to start wet again. And maybe we will do some lines. sure what I'm doing but that's part of it now I think I'll employ my good old spritzer I've got lots of lovely pigment on there little perimeters um, nicely covered up too. I love my little raggedy edges. So there's that one. Almost look like little leaf shapes. Isn't that green beautiful? I might have to take a photo at the end even if I can't save the save the paper. I wonder in fact actually I'm just having a look now what happens if I sop up. Isn't that pretty? I can probably still use that as my um, my base piece for this, I think. Um, right, so we've got a bit of dampness on here. We'll do some spot making. You can almost actually just use it like a stamp. Just keeping a light hold on it. Okay, what happens when we split through with this? Isn't that lovely. Let's give them a little softening. And just think if you combined up various of these little mark making techniques together. It's just giving us an interesting, interesting background to work with. Little colour along the edges. It doesn't matter if some are more intense than others anyway. Just adds to the interest. Okay. Have we really only done five so far? Or did I did I do some of them twice? I don't know. I'm having too much fun and so I don't even know what I'm doing. So this time. Shave them off as well. Okay. Okay, I'll just put a piece of 
thread. Don't need thread, that's for sure. Well, not yet, anyway. So I've got little specks on there. And now as I activate them. Isn't that lovely? And I wonder if I can sort of double the speckage. I think it's have, nice to have some that aren't as um, yeah as strongly coloured up. I don't know if I need any more water just to make sure they are fully fully activated. That should be plenty of water. I think if I had any more, and it would be actually um, drowning. So there's that one. Once they're dry, I'll come back and um, yeah show them to you in either later in this video or in the next um, video of this series. Let's let's pick up a bit of the surface moisture. Sop it up a bit. Now, how about this? I wonder. Hi. Is this going to get messy? It's probably going to get messy, isn't it, Christine? But that's okay. Whenever did Christine shy away from messy? There we go. Okay, now maybe I will... I guess I can just do some other mark making around it or I can transfer it maybe to the under color let's see if we can get it to come off on here and then I'll just have even more nice color to play with down the track wipe the residual off on here looks like I've robbed a bank or something You know me, always playing. It does come off with um, with soap, so never fear. So I'll just bring a bit of that colour down. I think I'll leave the handprint pretty much as it is. I think, unless I want to just give it a tiny, tiny bit of spritzing, but I think it should be already should be already pretty activated. So that's how that one looks. One, my little pins um, already thinking making little trees potentially little landscape if you will um, what do I want next this What if I use a finer sort of little pen? Can I get sort of a bit more of a leafy, leaf, leafy effect? And I wonder if I use some screwed up paper towel, can I get a sort of an imprint in it? I can add a bit of that colour down the side. where there's the wrinkles underneath I've got those little wrinkle marks as well I like that isn't that lovely really good okay next up I want to do 
Ah ja, da ist noch nichts sagen. Make me think I want to do some mountains as well. The reason I chose green, as I um, said in response to Annie's video, is uh, because it's been so wet here and everything is so green and lush. Sometimes less is indeed more. Okay, so I might do for this one. I might do my I might do my mountains on this one. fully wet. Oh, look at that. It almost looks like the vegetation on the side of a mountain. I like that. Reminds me a bit of Bright where there's cleared some of the pine plantations that I was uh, a still rush. Beautiful. Love that effect. So you can do this with, I guess, yeah, I mean, your different types of inks or watercolours, they'll behave differently, but you can definitely just do some mark making have some fun so maybe I should um, do some other mark making where I actually put some ink into a pan I don't know if you can see either of these pans but I'm just mixing some ink and water in and then I am just doing some swirly shapes big spotty shapes if I just shoot some of them but then leave the ones that were already wet so I've picked up some of the nice color from the background but it's definitely got the, the color of this one start this one wet and I might do a leaf this one I think or maybe a series of leaves Just to be different, do some in the another direction. Okay. As I 
say I just love watching it blossom and just soften soften those designs but still leave those little speckly sort of areas on it I just think that's really interesting as an effect definitely getting nicely sodden <laughs> it's very good having this um, yeah this plastic cutting a mat down Feel like that could just be one in and of itself i think it might be depends if i've got enough yeah no, i think i have i've only got to do one more and i've got two bits of calico still left so i think we might just call that its own little its own little one yeah let's do that okay Shouldn't have put too much on there. Do another wet one. And maybe I'll do a with them too much I just want to just bring a bit of pigment around but I think that's pretty good pretty good indeed so and then maybe our final piece will indeed be a piece where we soak up the, the surface color and probably take a bit, bit more of the color off my hands maybe unless I'm picking more up on my hands <laughs> who knows who knows what's going on with Christine's hands Christine is having fun. try hanging this um, paper towel out on the line when I hang the other ones if it's not going to rain out on the line because I just think that's that's beautiful I'd love to have a go at thinking how I can turn a paper towel into something like like fabric I even love the little swirls on it or I might even use it in cards or something because I think that is super cool so maybe I'll just use up my paint brushes as well which have colour still left on them down a bit and get a bit of other colour up there. Okay. I'll just give my hands another clean as well. I'll put my ink tents back into their little pans. Clean the paint tray. I've been using Calico to do this, which has been giving me a lovely um, decorated piece of Calico, but I'm just using a, a piece of paper towel for now. Put that into the rubbish bin. Okay, and I will put this tray down here as well. And I'll shift this behind me. I now want to show you what I'm planning to be adding into my mini colour family sketchbook. So I don't know how much we're going to be able to see of this. So it's a basket. I might need to bring you up, I think. Just a moment while I bring you up, Skip. 
So it's a basket full of all sorts of things. You can probably see threads upon threads, fabric upon fabric, um, a lot of stuff. So I'll move that off to the side. I might need to stand up for this, this component. Um, and I've also got this, um, I have so many jars of oughts, which is great that I'm working on a little project where I'm creating oughts um, beads, one for each day of the year. I've got two of those so far. Let me just grab them off my little calendar, calendar board to show you. I haven't yet started attaching them together. I've just been putting them on little, little pins. But they are my two little beads so far. Just put those to the side. So what I'm planning to do with my fabric uh, sketchbook, my little mini fabric sketchbook, is add in um, lots of different fabrics and fibres in the colour green. So I'll be just taking little, and I'm thinking of almost doing it like one of my little scrappy shapes. So just taking small amounts of greens fabrics that have other colours in them. I'll just be taking the green components and I'm thinking I will try to put the colours on the colour of my Kelico that's closest to that colour. That's the kind of my initial thinking. We shall see if that's where we go. But I just thought I'd give you a bit of a taste of what I've pulled out of my collection so far. I'm lucky to have lots of little scrappy squares like this. Um, some of them have been from the, the sewing layer, others are from the reverse art truck, which are little samples. So I wouldn't use the black, but I'd use the greens. Wouldn't use the yellows, but we could use the leaves. That one's almost more blue, I think. Although it's hard to tell. Sometimes the blues um, are almost that sort of bluey, tealy colour. One definitely looks more browns to me, so I'll take that one out. It's got a little bit of green in it, but I think it's definitely more browns. Got some little mini charm squares. A little bit of fabric off that um, Travis panel. So definitely lots and lots of fabric inspiration. Got a big roll of this very vintage fabric with lots of greeny browns on it. Old shirt material, little leafy bits. This one's got obviously pinks and orange, but also got green in it. Bits of green on leaves again. Some bigger bits of um, fabric. A little bit of silk with leaves on it. Mm. This one's all muted colours but almost looks like brush strokes. Greens on greeny blue, some sari type fabric, some shirts, some spots, some more lovely samples from the reverse art truck. There is actually one colour in the um, Intense that's over in the yellow section that's almost a yellow green, so I might have to might have to do a swatch of that as well. That one, that's probably more in the blue colour story, I think, and that's that's got the greeny khaki colours again, though that khaki sort of colour. This one's got some greens on canvas. Checks, silks. A little garden scene, a satin with a twirl type pattern on it, some other lovely pattern making, one that almost looks like animal fur but it's got greeny colours, textured fabrics, and this was just a tiny um, little assortment that I just pulled out from a couple of my scrappy sort of bags, little vines, another fabric sample, oh, beautiful watercolor colory effects and I can even add if I've got something nice like this which has a um, larger format I can even add extra pages into my little sketchbook um, that would have been part of a, a pants sample checks a little bit 
bits of linen, khaki with other flowers, little leaves, other bits, little bits of trim. It's a bit of that recent um, snuggle pot and cuddle pie fabric I got. Some textural fabrics, some other little green leaves, some khaki coloured silky material. Lots of little little scraps of greens and little hexagon, <laughs> little green check down there. Um, I'll also be looking at my embroideries. So I've got embroideries that I um, chop into and this one's got some sweet little leaves on it. Um, I'll probably dye some of my little lacy um, scraps and things so I've got those as an option to add in. Um, I'll make use of rickracks. Um, in green and these sorts of trims like this pom-pom um, trim Just, um, pop that over there. and then I've got lots of um, lovely threads so let me actually it might be easier because I don't think I'll go through all of my threads but that's um, just a small selection of threads that I um, have from crochet variegated solids um, other little vintage crochets. I've got all the beautiful um, green yarns that I got recently um, from a small scale um, yarn place. I'm just seeing if I can find the card from Karlund Yarns, Spinning Artisan Yarn in Australia. And so I had that in all sorts of beautiful green colours. So that also swayed me in thinking about this because I'd love to incorporate these into something that I'm going to keep as well as putting them into other projects so they're just so many nice beautiful interesting interesting greens in that I've got other um, embroidery or tapestry wools I've got regular um, cottons I've got beautiful Sue Spargo um, sort of iridescent colored Yarn. I've got regular sewing cottons. I've got just random cottons um, tied on things. I've got some of Nana's rickrack. Um, lots of lots of fun things to play with there. Um, so I think I've got no shortage. I almost don't think I sh should look out any uh, more green fabrics or green threads. But I imagine this is a project we can can add to. So what I'll be doing is. Um, I'll let my pages dry and then I'll probably come back in another video and we can start to um, group our fabrics onto the pages and start thinking about how we're going to attach them. And that way you'll get to see how the colours um, sort of turn because they do change as they, as they do their drying. So thanks so much for watching and I look forward to working on this project with you. Bye everyone.